Oh, oh, firepower. Hello, heroes of Eternum. If you are like me, then you probably can't wait for New World to launch and to get right to some amazing open world PvP, outpost rush, and full-scale wars that New World will have to offer. Have you decided yet which uh, weapons you're going to use and how you're going to build your character? For me, I'm going with the bow and uh, the spear, and I'm going to use a dexterity constitution build because I think it's going to be effective both in PvP and PvE, and I have always loved playing the Ranger, so that's definitely how I'm going to go. Today we'll be checking out the new promotion of Outpost Rush, a fantastic looking 20 versus 20 PvP and PvE competition that players can sign up for in game. When you sign up, you can sign up solo or you can sign up with up to five friends. Other things that you can do other than killing the enemy to uh, help you win the competition is to gather resources, repair your defenses, repair weapons that you use to attack or defend, and also uh, by fighting some bosses that give you buffs that will help you achieve victory. I think it's very interesting that these PvE factors can help you achieve victory in a PvP competition. And the bigger your team's victory is, the bigger the reward will be. This week on the third episode of A Turnum Awaits, Outpost Rush. We're bringing the battle to a Turnum in an all new PvPVE mode, Outpost Rush. Jump in solo or with up to five of your friends in a coordinated 20 versus 20 battle. Teams must coordinate and balance their time upgrading outposts, gathering resources, capturing objectives, and defeating enemies. When your team spawns into a match, you'll want to push forward and capture outposts to bring you closer to victory. Outposts can be upgraded, defended, and used as forward operating bases to drive the enemy back. Gather resources to support your team and keep your outposts well protected. Each outpost has features that your team can use to help you in battle. Upgrade your outpost's gate to keep the enemy team at bay. Spend resources to buy protection wards, creating a respawn point at your outpost. Build repeater turrets and vats of burning oil to rain fire down on the other team and repel their attacks. Create a command post to inspire your team, making them stronger and more resilient. But defeating the enemy isn't the only way to win. Outpost Rush has plenty of other objectives too. Build cannons and give your team the edge in an outpost siege. Summoning circles give players a chance to summon some of Eternum's most fearsome creatures to fight on their side. Collect Azoth Essence to make an offering to the Corrupted Portal. If your team sacrifices enough Essence, you'll be rewarded with a powerful advantage. Throughout the match, Baroness Hain appears. If your team can manage to defeat her, they'll be granted an immensely powerful buff that can help turn the tide of battle. Defeating the Baroness also freezes the other team's score, giving you a chance to catch up if you're behind or put the final nail in the other team's coffin. There are so many ways to win an outpost rush. Collect resources for your team. Lay siege to enemy outposts and capture map objectives. Victory means reward and gold and treasure. The bigger the victory, the bigger the reward. There's so much to discover in New World, and Outpost Rush is only the beginning. We'll see you in a turn. Okay, so let's just mark that one up as another uh, outstanding 
game promotion by the devs in New World. By my count, we have a 20 versus 20 version of PvP, a 50 versus 50 version of PvP, and a 100 versus 100 siege type of PvP. And that that doesn't include open world PvP when you're just running around doing your quests, which happens to be my favorite type of PvP. And I wanted to devote this last part of Eternum Awaits to those diehard PvP fans that are really turned off by the fact that players can now opt out of PvP. You know, as a PvPer myself, and the fact that the guys that I play with, uh, for the most part, are all PvPers too. I would say, you know, 99 out of 100 of the people I played with tend to favor PvP. But, you know, we control the future of this. And, you know, if, if you want to see PvP thriving and a common, you know, a normal thing to see when you log in, then make sure you're always flagged. I'm always flagged for PvP. Even if my friends aren't on, I'm flagged for PvP while I run around doing my PvE quests. So there's going to be times I'm going to run into groups as a solo and I'm going to get my head smashed in. And that's okay. I can spawn in wherever I spawn in and head that way and take them on again or I can go do something else. But I, I think that sometimes as PvPers we underestimate how much control New World has actually given us in this situation. Because all we have to do is stay flagged for PvP. That's all you got to do. Stay flagged for PvP and you're going to get plenty of PvP. And so uh, rather than begrudging the people who don't want to do it and who aren't interested in doing it, then, you know, there's a thousand people on the server. There's plenty of people that are going to be flagged for PvP and ready to rumble. I'll be one of them all the time, 100% of the time. So rather than getting disenfranchised or not buying the game because of that, you know, the fact that people can opt out, dig in, stay flagged for PvP, and go out and have fun. There's never been a game like this. And I think that if we approach it with the right attitude, we can control the culture of the game. <laughs>